Arcade Perfect My Arse Right, okay guys, welcome to another uh, Arcade Perfect My Arse. This is Ivan Stewart's Super Off-Road. Now, he is no relation to myself, and indeed you're probably thinking like myself, who the bloody hell is Ivan Stewart? <laughs> I can only guess he was a... Uh, a famous, uh, monster truck type person um, back in the 80s, and was probably quite popular in America. I mean, this, the whole monster truck thing is pretty much an American thing. I know you do, I think you do get some events in the UK, but I think it's definitely a, an American thing. But yeah, this game, it was uh, borrowing the, the game mechanics from uh, Super Sprint, or before that, it was just called Sprint, which was released by Atari back in the very, very late 70s. Um, then, you, then came Super Sprint, then you got Championship Sprint. Um, absolutely loved the Super Sprint games. I loved it on the uh, Atari ST. In fact, I'll, I'll put a link up to my Arcade Perfect My Arse for Super Sprint. So this this borrows the same game mechanics. You've got an, over, an overall view of the track. But the difference between this one is you've obviously got, you know, you've got ramps and bumps. And because of that, it is a lot, lot harder to play. <laughs> I don't mind admitting that. Now I'm uh, I'm the red car. I'm actually using the mouse because it was it used a steering wheel in arcades. Trying to I tried to play it with a joystick and it was absolutely hopeless. A mouse actually allows you the, the sort of the, the sort of the quite the delicate kind of turning which you really need for a game like this. But I've never really played this game. I've had the occasional shot of it and never really got on with it. I just find it a bit too difficult. I didn't even catch who wrote this, I don't, it wasn't Atari. But I think, uh, I think like Super Sprint you could have up to four players playing all at the same time. And similar to Super Sprint you've got power ups or in this case you can pick up nitros and that kind of stuff. Nitros give you a little boost. Right, I managed to get first place. Some top totty as well. Right, so you can upgrade your uh, your car. I like it. Just take the same sprite off the girl and just change the colours. <laughs> I'm sure uh, these tracks, are they even real tracks? Huvos Grande. Yeah, with the puddles and whatnot, it's, I find it quite fiddly. See, sometimes I get stuck when you're trying to turn. But I didn't realise just how quite how many uh, Conversions of this there were. It's always interesting when I make these arcade perfect my arses, you know, you get to see versions that you just never ever thought possible. Or indeed you didn't you didn't even think existed. Never ever seen an arcade version of this. thing is, there were so many arcade games made, and yeah, there's there's always going to be the ones that are really the most desirable games, and there's going to be other games that aren't quite so. I would imagine the actual physical size of this cab would, you would need quite a big uh, warehouse or a big basement to have something like this, and I would imagine it would probably take about 10 guys to carry the damn thing through the door. So yeah, that is the arcade one. Let's take a wee look at some home versions. Right, first up we've got the Commodore Amiga one, which I would imagine would probably do quite a decent version, you know, it's perfectly capable of doing the graphics, it's not a particularly uh, graphically intensive game at all, you know, it's just uh, four little sprites moving about. Yeah, it's, it's pretty damn good looking, if you ask me. <laughs> yeah, I'm... Um, 
Now the one thing that annoys me about this version is you've got to hold the joystick forwards to uh, to move forwards. And when you're having to hold the joystick forwards whilst trying to turn as well, it's awfully easy to kind of get stuck in the, the scenery. There is nothing more frustrating than playing a you know an arcade racing game, and just because of the controls, you're banging into things. I mean, in real life, I can drive a car in real life, and I don't go crashing into walls. And so you know, if a computer game was going to be realistic, it should make it. It should try and make the steering, you know, second nature. You shouldn't have to think about it. Um, it should all be about the, the actual. Uh, racing part of it. But anyway, I'm just being a bit of a whinger here. You know, looks wise, it looks apart. What I'll do is I'll, I'll play uh, a couple of tracks of each version, I think. But yeah, this that's, this absolutely looks apart, you know, as we would expect. I know the, the uh, Super Sprint on the Amiga was excellent. In fact, I tell a lie, you know, I don't think Super Sprint came out for the Commodore Amiga. It was on, it definitely came out for the Atari ST and that was a cracking version. That was the one that I played all the time. I noticed the, the tracks are slightly different, I think. Are they? I can't remember. I keep forgetting to use the little nitros. I think you've really got to be in a kind of straight line before you use it, because if you don't, you end up just ramming straight in a wall, just like I'm doing there just now. <laughs> this game would probably be a lot easier if you could use the keys. That's how I used to play the uh, Super Sprint and the ST. It just allows the, the really uh, sort of fine tuning when you're turning the car. Yeah, I keep getting caught in the, these little turns at the very top. So, anyway, listen, that's a pretty damn good version. That is the Commodore Amiga one. Next up, we've got the Amstrad one. Uh, joystick. A program by Steve Turner. The Graft Gold, they did, uh, if I'm not mistaken, they did all the uh, conversions of Rainbow Islands, which is not a game I like at all, but. I believe the actual versions, the, the conversions I should say, were actually really, really good. Right, sorry, anyway, back back to what we're talking about, the Amstrad one. Ooh, I'm not keen on that colour at all. <laughs> now, I'm uh, the little red car, at least you can tell what car I am. Yeah, I just, I know they're trying to go for the, the colour of the dirt, so they've picked this kind of orangey... But actual graphic wise it's pretty damn good, it's quite detailed. Again, it uses annoying uh, hold forwards accelerate. So I'm assuming that that was going to be the, the control of choice that they would uh, inflict on every computer owner. <laughs> I'll be the wrong way here. Yeah, you use the, the nitro and you just fly about like a bloody maniac. And I'm assuming you could have up to three people playing, presumably with the with the uh, using the, the keyboards. T 
tires. That's American spelling. Sounds pretty minimal, as you would probably expect. Yeah, it's just this is why I didn't play this game very much because I just you know look at them. <laughs> I just can't get going in the right direction at all. And then, you know, before you know it, you're in last place, you're almost getting lapped. And given it's a race game, you know, that just shouldn't happen. You need to you need to be up there competing. Actually, using the Natos is actually worse than not using them, actually. Because you just fly all over the place completely out of control. But, you know what, yeah, it's a bar of the, sort of the, the controls. That's just possibly me, right? And I've been a, a big bloody whinger. Um, this isn't bad at all. It looks, it's, it's nicely detailed graphics. I like that. I'm not overly keen in the colour scheme they've used. It's just a bit yucky looking. But, all in all, it's quite a, a decent conversion in Amstrad. Right, this is the Atari ST, so I'm assuming this is going to be pretty much identical to the, uh, the Amiga one. I don't know why I'm putting my name in. You know what, I'm maybe putting it in, interestingly, after uh, that uh, the, the, the big, you know, thing that happened with Top Hat Gamer and, you know, borrowing content. If you stick your name into games, it means that people are less likely to borrow it. But the thing is, because I do commentary over all my games, you know, people, if they want to use, uh, borrow my game footage, they would have to uh, get rid of the sound. Not just me talking, they need to get rid of the actual sound itself. But uh, yeah, stick your stick your high score, uh, your name in, so people can tell it is it is actually you playing. And I think it's pretty obvious, going by how god awful I am, that this is indeed me. So anyway, yeah, Atari ST one, yep, yeah, it's almost it's almost identical. In fact, I'd be I'd be hard actually pushed to to see any difference between this and the Commodore Amiga one. thing about when I make these arcade perfect my arses, um, you, you start to lose the will to live <laughs> by the time you're on your, you're on your tenth uh, conversion, trying to play it and be all happy and pretend it's a great game. <laughs> Sorry if it's a, a game that you really enjoy, but uh, when it's a game like this that I'm not a big fan of, it can be it can be a bit of a chore, haven't it? <coughs> play all the versions, but hey ho. Yeah, I'm guessing they probably wrote this for the ST and they just did a straightforward port across to the Amiga. Yeehaw! Now it's not, see if you can get up in the lead like that, it's not quite so bad. It's when you're at the back of the pack and you keep trying to get through and you're banging into other cars and whatnot, but if you can kind of get get in front, well, like I was doing. Like any of these games, though, you know, the more you play it, the better you're going to get. I play all these games straight off the bat, I don't practice, I don't even look at them, I just make, you know, load the game up, start recording, and away I go. If I was going to do this properly, I should really play, play the game for some time, but I've not got the time unfortunately guys. If it was a full time job then that would be different but
So yeah, Tari ST1 again, good conversion. Right, the next one is the Commodore 64. Interestingly, you can have three players there, which is pretty good. <laughs> now, I like that. I like this a lot, actually. Um, the C64 is always... Uh, it always comes in for a bit of criticism for being uh, just being able to do different colours of brown. But I've got to say, this this is actually it. It does the job. It does the job. It looks it looks authentic. And also having the sprites, you can have four different coloured cars. And it's got music as well. So yes, this is actually. Pretty damn good. You even get a little uh, sound effect when you when you complete a lap. Ah, I pipped at the post. <laughs> I quite like the sound actually, the, the music is so perfectly deep south hillbilly type stuff. Yeehaw! And it's perfectly playable. Again, it uses the annoying uh, joystick thing, but possibly starting to get used to it slightly. Ah, fuck off the road. Just trying to get a straight line through that little bit at the top. Yeah, that's the C64 one, that is pretty damn good. Right, next one, this is on the Game Boy. Now, this is called Super Off-Road. Um, I'm assuming it's, you know, it was, it was obviously marketed by a different company, but, you know, you can tell here it's, it's the same game. That's rather generous, giving you upgrades right away. Chuvos Grande. <laughs> right, I am the white car, I think. Yep. It was always going to be either a white or a shade of grey, given it's a Game Boy. You know, it's pretty damned impressive that just what the little Game Boy could actually do, you know. It should never have been capable of running arcade games. Now, obviously I'm playing this on a, under emulation, and it's it's on the TV, so the screen is nice and big. I don't know how this would actually play... How play... Sorry, how playable it would be, you know, on the actual uh, Game Boy hardware. I mean, the Game Boy was never... It wasn't the it wasn't the Game Boy. It was the screen that they put in the Game Boy. It wasn't the greatest, um, and there was a lot. of Any time the, the screen scrolled, you got a lot of blurring going on. This is quite difficult to control. Actually, I thought being a the good thing about this one is you're using the fire button to, to accelerate, but it's 
it's not particularly controllable. I think we'll just play the play the single round of this one. It's quite a bit slower as well, and it's not you think it because it's slower it'd be a bit more playable, but it's not, unfortunately. But again, graphically it does look pretty damn good. You know, when you consider it's got is it eight eight colours of grey or something like that, I'm not exactly sure. You know, from a technical point of view it's pretty pretty impressive. Now, I believe this also did come out for the Game Gear, but I didn't actually have this to hand, so I couldn't feature the Game Gear one. <laughs> I think he's pulled, look at him. He's giving a lie. Yeah, that's a Game Boy one. Um, it's not the greatest version, but the fact that it can even run in the Game, in the game Boy is quite impressive. So, from one handheld, on to another. This is a Lynx, Atari Lynx. Interesting to see how this one plays. Well, graphically it's obviously a lot better looking. Right, that wasn't me, that was just this sort of demo mode, I think. So again, pick what you want. I mean, colour-wise, it looks really, really nice, but it's it's actually a bit confusing as to what way you're supposed to go here. Hmm. But you know, you look you look at the, the graphics of this, so you can tell just how far far in advance the Lynx was for its time. You know, it really was ahead of the, the time. If it wasn't for the shocking. Uh, battery consumption, the Lynx would have done pretty well because it was, it was amazing looking, you know, it's, it's kind of got, you know, it's, this was a handheld, you know, back in the early 90s. The problem with this version is this, excuse me, there's only, it's too kind of zoomed in looking. And trying to figure out what way I'm supposed to be going here ain't easy. <laughs> Am I going the right way here? Possibly. I don't know. Where's my... did I... I don't even know where I finished here. No idea. Right, we'll give... give it another go. The fact that the, the car bounces all over the place, I think it's got springs on its wheels, I mean I don't even, I, I'm, I don't even know if I'm going the right direction here, but it's just horribly confusing. <laughs> and I've now got stuck, oh, hey, I'm out again. <laughs> I've got to say the best version that you can play this game, and it's not an official version, it's a similar game, it's a skid marks on the uh, the Commodore Amiga. I think it also came out in the Mega Drive under Super Skid Marks. It is a similar kind of game, but it is just awesome. So anyway, that's the Atari Lynx. Graphically wise, it's nice, but it's just mm, it's just a bit too zoomed in and a bit confusing. So the next one is the Master System. So you've got you know, potentially two players taking part. Redoubt, is that the name of the track, is it? I 
see, it's a bit confusing. See that bit at the very top right hand side? It doesn't look like there's enough space to, to kind of get through, but I like the fact that, yeah, this one, it doesn't scroll. You can see the whole screen. Like what the other versions are, this, at least you can see what you're supposed to be doing. And the tracks in this one are different. Well, certainly, I don't recall seeing this track. <laughs> but again, it's just it's super sensitive. And I keep shooting away off in the wrong direction. finish about, I think I was last. But you still get money for being last. Let's get more nitro. So, all in all, a pretty good pretty good version on the Master System. And again, it's obviously because you've got the, the gamepad and it's got the, the two buttons, one of them's accelerate and I'm assuming one of them's brake. It just it makes all the difference just being able to press a fire button to accelerate rather than having to hold it forwards. Yeah, that's not bad at all. Not bad at all. That is the Sega Master System. <coughs> How did I finish? I was last again, I think. No surprise there. Obviously, if they made this game now, you wouldn't have the, the totty handing over the, the prizes since I've now been banned. Well, they certainly have from Formula One. Right, anyway, enough about that waffle. Uh, this is the Mega Drive one. This one should be good. What do you mean choose a button for acceleration? How do I get past this? Come on! Just leave it the way it is. Yeah, let's turn the music off. Ah, it's quite odd giving you letting you upgrade your, your vehicle before the game's even started. And we're off. <laughs> yeah, nice, nice use of colour. Looks kind of... And I'm going completely the wrong way here again. <laughs> Ooh, that sound effect is very uh, Mega Drive, isn't it? I'm all over the shop here. And that is the reason I don't like this game. I just find it too damned uncontrollable. I don't like the way it jumps about. It's completely unrealistic. I know it's an arcade video game, guys. I completely get that, but... It just, just doesn't look like cars racing around the track. At least Super Sprint actually looked like cars. It looked like you were actually controlling an F1 racing car. And I've sprouted a beard! Yeah, like I was saying, in F1 you wouldn't get these uh, girls with their, their bikinis on. Not nowadays. Right, there's not a lot of sound. I might have been better leaving the, the music on. Uh, 
So, uh, yeah, I mean, this is... It's visually, it's... Or graphically, I should say, it's... It's probably about the most impressive one so far, but... I, I don't know, I just... I just don't really like the... I don't really like the version of this at all, the way it jumps about, it just looks a bit silly. <laughs> and I'm away off in the wrong direction once again. Big jukes! Ah, right, I've just noticed here, yeah, it tells you at the bottom how many nitros you've got. So, anyway, that's the Mega Drive one. It looks nice. I couldn't really control it too well. well that's probably just me. Right, from one console to the next console, this is the Nintendo NES. Oh, I don't know what's going on with that girl. It looks like an alien. Look at her eyes. And her mouth. Is that blood coming from her mouth? So it looks like you can have up to four players. Well, I don't think the NES could care for four, could it? Don't think so. Qualifying race, right, okay, so again, this is kind of doing its own thing. That's what the, the NES was always guilty of taking an arcade game and sort of tweaking it slightly. <laughs> I'm in a, a lovely pink car, I think. Certainly a wee bit easier to control this version, I've got to say. I think possibly because it's a bit slower as well. The thing about arcade games, arcade games were made to take in money. That's what they were, that's why they existed. Yeah, they were, you know, they had to be fun to get people to spend money on them, but ultimately they were there to take people's money as quickly as possible and try and end the game. So arcade games generally were extremely difficult. You never got an easy arcade game, or else everybody in their auntie would be on it all day, you know, spending ten pence. So that's why I always think some arcade games, they, you know, arcade games generally, they don't always make good home conversions. The only way you can really make it, you know, you, you need to kind of tweak the, the difficulty. And I think that's what they've done here. They've made this, well, I was going to say it's easy, it's not easy at all. I've just come third. Could start right into the wall and drive the wrong way. <laughs> I wonder why they went for pink rather than red, because I mean it was a red car in the arcade. It's fair to see after I finished making this video, I'll not be playing this game again in a hurry. It's not it's not a game I really enjoy at all. In fact one thing I completely I completely forgot to mention, uh, this was a game that was uh, I can't even remember who it was. One of the guys that watches the channel did put a particular request in for me to, to feature this game and that's why I've included it. Because like I say, it's not a game I've really played in arcades at all. So, yeah, that's the NES one. That's not bad at all. Right, this one. Now, this one came out of left field. I was really, really surprised with this one. This is the PC DOS one. You can probably tell with the, the music. It's very much uh, it's an ad lib sound card. But I've got to say, I am so, so impressed. 
with the graphics in this one. It's just, it's awesome. Absolutely awesome looking. Now I'm actually using the keyboard here. You never really think of the, the, sort of the PC DOS games, the early games, being particularly good. Not, certainly not in comparison to you know, the 16-bit machines like the Commodore Amiga and that, but I've got to say, really, really, really impressed with this. And using the keys, it's just, it's a lot more playable. Think about when you're using a joystick to control because you've got your finger on the, you know, on the, the gamepad, whatever, there's always a chance that you're going to oversteer, or you know, when you want to go in a straight line, you're going to be turning. But using the keyboard, I'm not doing a very good job right here. If you take your finger off the keyboard, then it will just keep going in a straight line. So in theory, it should make it a bit more, a bit easier. Well, I still keep getting caught in this, but ah, bugger, I'm going the wrong bloody way. Now one thing about this version, um, when I make these videos, I, what I tend to do is I, I play the game and then I do the voiceover later on, that's what I'm doing here just now, so I'm trying to do this, this one from memory, but I recorded this yesterday. The PC DOS one has automatic uh, acceleration. So when you go the wrong way, it just keeps going, but that is excellent, that is a really, really good version. And finally, the last one, guys, is going to be the Specky. So we've got two players possible. Oh, where the hell is the car? Right, okay. Right, the car that I'm controlling, well, obviously it's the one that's in last place. It's got a little, is it a little flag above it or something? Detail wise, it's, it looks nice, but um, I'd have preferred it if it, you know, if they could have made the, the players, the player one car a different colour. <laughs> I'm going completely in the wrong direction because it's very, very easy to lose, lose where you are. It does handle pretty well, I have to say. But yeah, could they not have made the, the car white or something, or, you know, whatever, just made it a slightly different colour, because it's just, it's... You know, especially when there's other cars around you, it's quite difficult to actually... to pinpoint your own one. I was in third, I think, yep. Yeah. So I'm just drinking a cup of tea if you can hear a gulping. <laughs> right, come on, let's get on with this race. Right, let's go. Come on, race. Yeah, it's like, spot the car. <laughs> what is going on? I don't know what these two cars are doing, they're having a bit of a tete a tete at the bottom of the screen there. But I shouldn't complain, because it means I'm in second place at least. Despite my best efforts to try and not be... <laughs> don't hit them, ah oh, bugger, I knew that was going to happen. She just left them, left them to it.
it all said and done, this is this is quite a nice version. I said if I just made the made the, the computer car a different colour, it would have made it that wee bit easier to see it. So it's quite easy to actually not know where you are in the race. Hey! First place. So, anyway, that is the ZX Spectrum one. Right, okay, that is it, guys. That is every version. Um, I don't think there's a particularly bad one out there. All the versions are pretty playable. Um, I wasn't I wasn't overly keen on the Atari Lynx one. I just felt it was slightly too zoomed in. Commodore Amiga and Atari ST ones are both excellent. Um, if you could configure them for the keys, then I think they would be really good. They both really look the part. The Amstrad one was pretty good. I wasn't overly keen on this sort of the brownie colour. Um, C64 one I think was definitely the 8-bit the favourite for me. Um, that was really nice. It looks nice, you know, graphically wise and it played pretty well as well. Game Boy 1 is quite impressive. Ultimately I think it would probably be quite unplayable on the actual handheld itself. Master System was pretty good as was the NES one, you know, decent enough conversions. Mega Drive one, it looks, looks really nice, probably the nicest looking one. Um, but I just felt it was jumping all over the place. PC DOS one was really good, that was a complete surprise for me. Um, you know, you just don't expect a good <laughs> arcade game in the PC, you know, not, certainly not the early, the early uh, sort of PC DOS games. Spectrum one again, like I says, just mentioned that one. If they'd changed the colour of the player one, then it might have made a bit, made it slightly more playable. So let me think. Um, my top three. <coughs> um, in third place, I'm going to go for the Commodore 64 one. I thought that was really, really good. Um, Excellent version, you know, playable, it looks, it looked the nicest. In joint second place, I'm going to have the Commodore, Amiga and Atari ST. I couldn't tell them apart. They, they looked like they were conversions of one another, so both really authentic looking. Um, you know, almost arcade perfect looking, but the surprise one, the surprise winner for me this time has to be the PC DOS one. It looks apart, the fact that you can play with keys as well just made it really really nice so thumbs up to the PC DOS version so that is it guys um, if there's a game you want to see me feature in this uh, Arcade Perfect My Arse thing stick your comments below um, as always guys thank you very much uh, for watching the videos and subscribing and as always thank you very very much for watching